Hi, Ray Moran with the B20, here today with PJ Patel, co-CEO of Valuation Research Corporation, one of the leading members of the Valuation Research Group, their global affiliate, which includes RBSA in India. PJ, for the audience, they might not know as much yet about VRG. Would you mind giving us an overview of them? Yeah, thanks, Ray, and uh, pleasure to be here. Um, so, so VRG Valuation Research Group is is the international affiliate group of Valuation Research Corp. And uh, VRG, we've got uh, thirteen member firms, fifteen hundred valuation people around the world. We literally cover the world. So, um, the Americas, Europe, Asia, Australia, um, and uh, as, as you know, today it, you know the world is uh, converging. There's you know lots of valuation needs that cross borders, cross continents, and and so um, VRG allows us to uh, effectively um, provide services to our clients. And that's why we're excited to have you with us at the V20 because of your global perspective as well as knowledge of U.S. issues and working with U.S. regulators. But back to the V20, PJ, you're also attending as the ASA's representative. ASA has been a tremendous supporter of V20. Would you mind giving an overview of the ASA and in particular their accredited member designation? Yeah, so so ASA is a, a BPO, uh, valuation professional organization, uh, but and although it's it really does have a, a global reach and um, it's a name and a, and a BPO that's thought about throughout the world. Um, you know the two designations that you talked about, AM and ASA. Um, you know historically, AM was sort of the junior. Uh, member and ASA was the senior member, but today I think they really fill two different needs in the marketplace. Uh, AM or accredited member, I, I think, you know, for us and, you know, BRC and BRG doing a lot of financial reporting work, uh, the AM designation really fits the needs of our people um, in terms of uh, the amount of effort that you need to put in to, to get the designation, but also maybe not necessarily. Um, in all the bells and whistles associated with uh, the senior or the ASA designation. Um, and, um, you, you know, look, I'd, I'd also say, right, for me, ASA has been a great vehicle over my career. I mean, I, I've been doing this for over 25 years and early on, it provided some great education and, um, you, you know, the, the courses to get uh, the ASA designation and the um, as I moved on in my career, um, the local chapters, I think you were a member of the Princeton chapter back in the day. Yes. You, you know, I presented there and, and, uh, sort of got the reps, you, you know, I would say to, uh, to then take on, you know, presenting at, at bigger conferences. And, and today, look, I, I still am active. Uh, I'll be at the international conference in New Orleans in a few weeks and, that part of the BBC and, and um, you know, the network that you have there and also the ability to give back um, to the profession. And, um, you, you know, that's a big part of it as well. So for, for me, it's, it's really been a phenomenal uh, vehicle over my career to, to support me with whatever I needed, whether it's education, networking, um, to, you know, giving back today. It's just, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been great. And in particular, the ASA has made great efforts to streamline that designation process to make it easier, which is of interest, of course, to members outside the U.S., uh, particularly in India. But Peter, yeah, I, I just, you know, I'll just add on that, Ray. I mean, I, I think, look, there's, there's a lot of different valuation purposes for different valuations that we all do. And, and so I, I think ASA has adapted to that. And, uh, um, it, it's a, um, Look, it's a difficult designation to get, and and you know there is a lot of rigor involved in that. But uh, um, but at the same time, it, you know the market, it, you know, sort of dictates you know what's required there as well. Exactly, and PJ, you're also chair of the Appraisal Issues Task Force, which has become very active in the sense of working with key U.S. regulators like the FASB, SEC, and others and particularly with um, leading members of the valuation profession in the U.S. 
It might not be as well known outside the U.S. Can you give us a bit of an overview of the AITF? Yeah, so, so the AITF was uh, started by my uh, late colleague, Al King, over 20 years ago. Um, and really, it was at the request of the FASB and the SEC to say, okay, get, get a bunch of the valuation people in the room together and you guys figure out how to sell valuation issues together collaboratively. Uh, of course, the group has evolved over time. I've been chairing the group for about 10 years, and um, uh, my, my thought process is just get all the stakeholders in the room together and let's discuss the issues. So as you pointed out, the FASB, the SEC, the PCOB, CFA Institute, IBSC, um, they're all active, as well as, you know, probably, you know, at any given meeting, anywhere from 50 to 100 valuation people from not only the U.S., but other parts of the world that join. And, um, you know, again, we just try to bring out the issues. Let's talk about them. It's a roundtable, relatively informal format. Um, and, um, you know, I'd, I'd like to think that uh, as a result of that, we're able to uh, flush out some of the issues that uh, surround valuation for financial reporting. Um, that, that's that's really what we're trying to do. I agree. I think communication with the regulators has really made for better valuation reports and an easier process for everybody as well as for investors. PJ, my favorite question has become asking people that we talked to when they first heard about some of the ambitious goals of the V20. What was your first reaction to it? Yeah, very intrigued, Ray. I mean, it's, um, you know, look, from the, there's a number of, of, of uh, elements to this. I mean, first of all, the attachment to the G20 and having this meeting shortly thereafter is, is interesting. Um, you, you know, for me personally, you, you know, I'm of Indian origin. My parents were born in India and, and I just happened to be also planning a trip to be in India as part of VRG's annual partner, global partner meeting. And, and so, uh, the store, the star sort of aligned that, that, okay, this meeting is happening. I'm going to be in India. It would be great to be able to connect with uh, the participants there. So, uh, very interesting and, and, um, I'm looking forward to it forward to meeting a lot of the people there and um, the attendees, the panelists and that sort. And we're also very happy that your colleagues uh, from the VRG, including Chris Mellon and Peter Ott from Canada, as well as Reggie Shaw from RBSA, will also participate and speak. So we're quite excited about that. PJ, thank you so much for the interview. I know this will help uh, inform people over what we're doing and we're excited to see you there. Thank you. Thanks, Rick.